Okay, so I just watched the movie The Hatred, and let me tell you, it is the scariest movie I think I've ever seen, at least this year for sure. Um, you are not going to be disappointed. you got to go see The Hatred. Like, there's so many twists and turns, and, like, the characters are so freaky. Like, I swear to God, I'm going to have to sleep with my light on tonight because I'm so scared. You guys want to know what I hate? Damn it, I'm good. This is a movie I'm sure the majority of you stopped watching about 20 minutes in. The Hatred is a 2017 horror movie on Netflix, but this is no American poltergeist. Who wants to go to the lake later? Yes! Right. It's an actual movie with actors trying. Uh... If the movie doesn't ring a bell, let me show you a quick snippet of the trailer diced up. What is it? You have to look under the bed. Breathe. See, something just clicked with a lot of you because it is very possible you were one of the 1.7 million people to watch that trailer on YouTube. Or perhaps you were one of the 36 million to watch it on Facebook. This trailer went stupid viral. I know Facebook views are awfully inflated, but 645,000 shares does not lie. Those are Princey A numbers. So your mind is out of control, huh? You want to control the mind. Well, guess what? You can't do it. I remember seeing this trailer and being like, whoa, that's stolen, right? Looks like a creepypasta come to life. Oh, look, it is. I'll give you the benefit of the doubt on that one. Oh, but what's this? A short film from 2014 with over 5 million views on YouTube that is the same exact thing? You forgot to look under the bed. Daddy, there's somebody in my bed. Now I'm not here to call anyone's plagiaristic doings out. I could really care less with this material. I mean, the movie wasn't even good. It wasn't like it was a huge success or anything. It went straight to DVD, whatever that is. <laughs> oh no, did I break my copy of Ouija? Oh no, no. You poor thing, come here. I spent $17 on this movie. By the way, if you guys enjoy this review, make sure to go watch my Ouija review. It's on my channel. Anyways, here's the cherry on top of everything. When you watch the movie, the scene from the trailer does not fit in well. It's almost like you're watching the movie, then it just cuts to the trailer. And now it all makes sense. See, The Hatred was a movie from a director who has never made a full-length horror film, Michael Kehoe. But he did make a horror film short in 2015, which I watched. And wouldn't you know it, it is practically identical to the scene in the hatred, down to the dialogue, the references, the props. It just has a lower budget. That's not me. So Michael Kehoe either decided to build a full length movie around his short, or he made a full length movie and shoved his short in it. Either way, no, no, bad director, no. <laughs> The movie begins with a very telling title sequence. The telling being, RUN! Watch the people vs. OJ, the Grinch, anything else! Did you finish the fence at the West End? Almost. Be nice to let the horses graze freely. It'd be nice for all of us to get out for once. We shall see. Please don't tell me these are our main characters. So Alice, the daughter, just wants to go to town to be with her gals since she lives in every abandoned house ever. But her father is basically the third Reich of the household so she never gets to do shit. Fun fact, her father, Samuel, is played by Andrew DeVoff, who also played the main villain in the horror classic, Wishmaster. Spare child, behold my true face. Oh my god. Papa, you're suffocating me. Ha ha! A bit of verbal foreshadowing there. Yo, see you later. Samuel is delivered a package by We Don't Know. He takes the package to the basement, opens it up, and our horror movie antagonist is a Nazi? Hitler is rolling in his grave. 
That fucking Photoshop. That vague looking me character is supposed to be him, by the way. He was Hitler's right hand man. And you know who else was there? That's right. The jig is up. It was me, Joe Hall, my dog. Aww. He reads the letter it came with, and the letter is read in his voice. My friend, a gift from the Fjord. His wish was that you have this as a token of his appreciation for all the work you have done. Which, aren't you usually supposed to hear the person's voice who wrote the letter? If you're reading this, then it must be true. He loves you. Dear Bruce, I need to be honest and clear. He sent one of Hitler's beloved artifacts, so Samuel obviously has to find a nice mantle to put it on. Or just break the wall and put it in there. I'm gonna save you for later. Meanwhile, Alice is out in the woods hoeing around with a Stranger Things extra. Then, oh no, I have three wishes? Stop, no. Alice is obviously pretty cheese, so she goes off on him. He pimp slaps her and she actually tries killing him, but she has the accuracy of a blind armadillo. He drowns her. What a dick. Papa, you're suffocating me. By the way, this isn't my area of expertise in terms of criticism, but I think I can fairly say that the sound design in this movie is terrible. It never sounds real. It never adjusts to the environment. It sounds like this. Do, 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 do. Oh look, Anthony Fantano uploaded a new review. I cannot. <laughs> Who's it? I have a theory that there's an Indian chief buried under this tree somewhere. I just realized how much this director loves foreshadowing. I'm watching the scene with the girl and the kid, which is foreshadowing basically with the movie with the cross and her being the fucking ghost there. And clearly this director was in AP English and he learned about foreshadowing and he was like, oh man, this is a fucking, this is the fucking dopest literary device. I'm gonna fucking Put this so many times in my movie. I fucking hate this next scene. Alice's mom, I don't know her name. Uh, we'll call her Hitler. Hitler's planting tulips. Samuel was spraying chemicals on his cuties. Hitler starts bashing her tulips, symbolism. Then Samuel just starts having a heart attack, cardiac arrest, seizure. Stroke. I don't preface any health problems with him. And yeah, there's a whole ghost Nazi cross thing happening that I refuse to mention until I fully understand it. He struggles for about 67 seconds in movie time until he drops to his knees. I halfway thought Hitler switched out his oxygen to kill him, but that would make too much sense. He seriously reaches for like four different branches while dying instead of, I don't know, taking off the mask? I'm singing in the rain. She comes over to help very lazily, mind you, and ends up spraying chemicals in his mask to finish the job, and she moves away. You know, I would have been fine with that 20 minute short film. It's not impressive, it's not well done. It's also fucking ugly to look at. Jeez, we get it, it's old, but it is much more tolerable than what's to come. for a vanilla scone and a skinny latte. I could use a cocktail after that ride. I doubt this place even sells mimosas. <laughs> Please don't tell me these are our main characters. Has there ever just been a group of ugly girls that have gotten massacred? By the way, in an interview with the director, Michael Kehoe, he was talking about the main characters and this is what he said. I wanted to find girls not looking like they were models, but somewhat attractive, but somewhat looking like the girl next door. That was my goal. And just in case you forgot already, these are our main characters. Beautiful women? <laughs> More like somewhat attractive. I'm only casting strong sixes and under. Ladies, should you ever come across this, you're all gorgeous. I'm sorry you got dragged into this. By the way, the term somewhat attractive has to be a new insult. It's a positive thing, but it just sounds like fucked up. Hey, do you think I'm cute? <laughs> uh. I mean, you're somewhat attractive. <laughs> they do this horrible thing where they try to introduce 12 characters in one scene, literally introducing the whole cast plus an extra from here on out. Hey guys, welcome to my scary film. This is Reagan, Leanne, Samantha, Batane. Why does the black chick have to have the weird name? She's literally named after an amino acid. I mean, I guess Leanne isn't much better. Ugh. Irene, Walter, Beth, Virgil, Edna, Jules, and Grimm. Look at the mountains. Gorgeous. Beautiful. Thank you. Go ahead, ladies. Quick. Uh, no. 
I've traveled with women before. They most definitely did not bring one carrying bag for the whole weekend. Edna, the tutor, shows up to drop off Irene. And I guess before I go on, I have to explain the plot quickly. This is Reagan. She got a job with her college professor, and him and his wife will be out of town this weekend. So they're housing her and her friends while they babysit their daughter, Irene, for the weekend. This tutor really got the shit end of the stick on this script. You could have put Meryl Streep as the tutor, and this scene would be no different. Please enjoy one of the worst scenes in cinematic history. You have grown into a little woman. <gasps> oh, sorry. This is Batane and Samantha and Leanne, my friends from college. Won't you come in? We're due for a storm this evening. Yes, Walter informed us of that. Thank you. This house. Irene is this jolly upbeat little girl that just happens to look like a demon sometimes. What is this? It's a monitor in case I need you. One in the den and one in the kitchen. You can hear me if I call you. Baby monitor. Oh yeah, everyone has those when they don't have babies. The baby monitor is such an obnoxious cliche because it's put in place as something that's supposed to be practical in the movie, but it just proves how lazy you are at coming up with this shit. Hey, how do you like your room, Leanne? I love it. What? Isn't that Samantha? I thought the blonde girl was Leanne. Hold on, go back to the scene where she introduced them. Oh, sorry. This is Batane and Samantha and Leanne. This is Batane and Samantha and Leanne. She fucked up. She fucked up when she was introducing them and they left it in the movie. So we now meet Jules, Reagan's sister, who's not even credited in the movie, by the way. She got beat out by the pizza guy extra. She's not important anyways. I honestly don't even get the connection between her grandma and the hospital and the haunted house. I say hospital in quotations because this is literally just a bedroom. And I'm no doctor, like somewhat attractive Ryan Gosling here, but shouldn't she be hooked up to this shit? This bitch has the nerve to come over here like, yeah, her post looks fine. Like any great horror movie, there's a house with a door that's locked that nobody should go into. No joke, the last two movies I've seen have had that cliche. Annabelle Creation and American Poltergeist. And I know, don't ask. I was forced to watch it. Anyways, Lay, uh, Samantha goes into the room after it's magically unlocked, which is what we call a twofer cliche. The other movies also had that one. <laughs> Fuck, man. You know what I find so funny about horror movies? Everybody in a horror movie acts like they've never seen a horror movie. There's zero self-awareness. Zero. Big bang, boom. Because this would creep out 98% of people, not persuade them to stay longer. You shouldn't be in here. It was open. I just walked in. This is Alice's room. Leanne, did you leave the water running in the shower? No, wasn't me. Well, it was still running when I went in there. Well, it's a good thing you caught it then. What? No, it's not what you think. This isn't setting up a feud between the two. This isn't leading to something bigger. This is nothing. This movie should have been 45 minutes. And don't try to fucking tell me, dude, it was the hatred. The hatred's falling through him. That's why she said that. They never do anything like that again. What did your mother do? She told me not to tell. Chocolate covered strawberries. And wine. Uh, your mother sure knows us. <laughs> She's a keeper. <laughs> uh, <laughs> That's literally what I wrote down in the script after watching that scene. I can't do it with these characters. I literally can't do it. It's just, the most corniest, unnatural lines followed by rich white people laughs.
They go have a picnic outside on this beautiful, gloomy, windy day, and Samantha just starts walking towards the barn. No motivation whatsoever. Nobody even questions it. Irene has to be creepy, so she angrily watches and doesn't move. Once again, nobody questions it. She goes near the tub, and just as you would assume, BOOM! Oh my god, what? Samantha's in trouble? Let me gently put my wine glass down. I'm coming! Chosen one! I'm coming! Chosen one! I'm coming! I'm not sure what's happening here because whatever's trying to grab her isn't trying to drown her. It's just lightly tugging at her wrist. It looks like she's just washing the hell out of some dishes. You don't think I did this to myself. We're just glad that you're okay. I'm gonna go take a warm shower. Try to calm my nerves. That sounds like a good idea. Does it? Sending her to another tub with water? That's the game plan? Got it. Irene tells Reagan that the barn incident was Alice. Alice? Who's Alice? Oh, hey guys, were you about to explain the hauntings? <laughs> Too bad, suck it, I have lines to say. It says here she flatlined six minutes ago. No alarm? All right, check the EKG and get a reading for the past three hours. And do not leave her. You know what? I actually like that. That's a cool little concept in a horror movie. Still not hooked up though. By the way, what is this Z-plot they're trying to incorporate? Right now, at this very moment, after watching the movie multiple times, I don't know why this is in the movie. I thought this lady was gonna be this lady, but no, she's not. I thought they'd be related at least or something. No, they're not. So to avoid further confusion, I would really appreciate it if the nurse would just pull the plug. If there even is one. The girls decide to play hide and seek, just running down that cliche list. So these two start rifling through people's personal shit. This one sees an eye, this one sees her grandma. Why? Because this movie lacks any type of tension, this creepy pizza guy is supposed to scare us, I guess. Irene, do not answer that. <gasps> Who had the pepperoni and ice cream? Jeez, what is this? What is the what is the blonde girl's name, man? Bailey Corman. Alrighty, let me just give you a quick follow on the gram. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Sir. Well, I never got it. I mean, studying things that happened centuries ago. I mean, there's a reason they call it ancient history. Yeah. You just said the reason. That wasn't an insult. Why did you phrase that as an insult? You just said something twice differently. What a stupid fucking line, Kiho. I don't even blame her. She's not the dumb one. You wrote it. They start looking through all the documents they found downstairs. Samantha apparently is a history whiz, so she knows everything about everything. It really helps the story move along in a natural manner. Oh no! The budget's on the loose! Batane decides to go to bed, and of course she- What the hell was that? That had to be a dog. That was a dog. That was definitely Airbud. The ghost of Airbud. We get to enjoy Batane half naked for a bit. Really the highlight of this movie. She ends up having her phone sex interrupted by Nazi radio broadcast. And then her boyfriend texts her some creepy shit. Hmm. Nothing out of the ordinary here, good night! Samantha deep dives into the web to learn all the information she can about all the documents she found. So here's what we learn in this scene. Pay attention, see if I'm missing something. The Nazi relic that Samuel was gifted was meant to be worn by someone and absorb all their hatred and fear, therefore getting rid of it. So they persevere in battle. It doesn't really make sense. Like I get making someone fearless, but wouldn't you want to keep that hatred towards the opposition? Also, the relic is supposed to retain all that hate and fear bearing heavy consequences to anybody who encounters it. Does that mean that that relic is only a one-time use? What a shitty product. Keep in mind, this review may seem like I'm covering every single scene, but I'm not. I'm skipping a lot of the horror because it's pointless. It's not even so bad it's funny. I don't get what is haunting them. This thing grabbed her through the water, Hack cell phones, hack computers, the shaggy dog, GameCube graphics, Sig Hale, Franklin the Turtle's ghost. I don't know what I'm watching. Hit images. Oh, that is a disturbing picture. An old man in a gas mask. I'd be more concerned with why he's wearing it than the look of it. Oh. 
Did we just rip a gas chamber joke? Was the whole plot designed that way to lead up to a gas chamber joke? They try to use the baby monitor thing to scare you and that doesn't even hit. The girls leisurely run up the stairs and all they find is a little puddle of water and a dead bird. By the way, that's a dead bird. That is supposed to be a dead bird. I honestly didn't know until they said, that's a dead bird. <laughs> don't worry guys, I'll dispose of this dead bird whose wings don't move. Then we get this first person, oh no, something has awoken shot. And why now? Why is something being awoken now? What the shit was everything else? Horror movie characters love using tea kettles. Maybe I'm just an uncultured swine, but I've never seen a tea kettle. We have Keurigs. Fuck off. Everyone goes to bed and Reagan decides to watch some TV. <laughs> Gotta watch something old timey and creepy because the Friends rerun would kill the tension. Horror, 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 it doesn't make too much sense. Why is the demon ghost phantom even doing this? What does it gain from this little charade? Besides a little bamboozle for the audience. Anyways, ironically, after the trailer scene is the worst of this movie. You ever been blue balled by a handjob? That's what this movie is. It was never good to begin with and it sure as hell doesn't leave you satisfied. I don't know what I'm supposed to feel when the credits hit. I no longer know who the antagonist is, if there even is one. There's scenes that are portrayed as breakthroughs to advance the plot, but they make no sense. There's like eight different things happening and they're all boring as shit and barely developed. I've honestly searched the hatred explained because I don't have the answers. Okay, so this scares Reagan and she runs to the bathroom with Irene. Why this grown woman believes a chunk of wood will be the deterrent for this? I don't know, maybe because this does dumb shit like repeatedly bang a door instead of murdering them. First off, fuck your bitch in the click you claim. West side when we ride, come a quick put game. You claim they start hearing a shovel axe pick sound effect. And that makes them leave the bathroom, even though the reason they went into the bathroom is because this is in the house. Anyways, Reagan has the nerve to jog into Batane's room saying, Batane, wake up! <laughs> As if she would be able to sleep through all this. Also, this doesn't make sense for a ghost to do. Did the ghost kill her, then rope her up? Is the movie insinuating she was hung in that position? Why are her hands gripping the rope still? Where's Logan Paul when you need him? So apparently this is Alice. That's what Irene tells Reagan. That's Alice. And based off that information alone, Reagan is able to determine, oh, it's the amulet. It's feeding off our hatred and fear. It must be in this house. I couldn't even jump to that conclusion as an audience member. And I see everything that's happening. We cannot let the fear and hatred consume us. 
I don't understand. Reagan basically explains Alice turns into this shit when it feeds off fear and hatred. Okay, so let's run down the killings. Samantha dies by the reptile version because she was fearful at the moment. Okay. That makes sense. Batane also dies by the reptile version because she was asleep? Huh? There's no emotion there. She isn't feeding you anything. And you can argue, oh, well, the creepy little text, you know, built up that fear and it stayed there while she was asleep. And then that's why reptile attacked her. Okay, so explain this then. Leanne is here and gets killed by regular Alice, even though I would consider her fearful in that moment, more fearful than Batane. She was scared, so she should be feeding this monster. The monster should kill her, but it doesn't, it's Alice. <laughs> Why the hell didn't you say anything as soon as it fell? And how did you not see her? She's right there. She's literally right across from there. I don't understand. Disregarding logic for tension, the hatred, 2017. Michael G. Kehoe just starts throwing everything at the wall at the end of this movie. For no reason except to add to the body count, they find Irene's parents have never even left the house. They were barbed wire to death in their car in the garage. And apparently nobody went into the garage this whole time. Reagan plans for them to escape through the doggy door in the kitchen. And up until now, there has been no mention of a pet. Then again. For some reason, they pile on the screen time for this girl. They give her like eight minutes just to cry and scream, Reagan! Alice is then just normal and out and about. She warns Reagan about her father, even though up until this point, I haven't seen him kill anybody or be a threat at all. Hey guys, look, it's Virgil, that guy they introduced her for seconds. Reagan finally finds the burn imprint thingy that I probably still haven't talked enough about to really explain it. You guys don't need to know about it. They, they really focus on it. You're fine. She finds it and then finds Alice's dead body and the movie's like, yeah, that's what Alice wanted the whole time. She just wanted to be found. Says fucking who? When was that ever a thing? That was never a thing. Just because Alice starts saying shit like, in the last five minutes of the movie doesn't justify this. Virgil arrives to the house and the movie's like, hey, don't forget about this guy, he's super dangerous. Nazis a bad. Reagan steals Alice's locket like she's fucking Indiana Jones and runs out. Virgil's an idiot, keeps asking questions and then they give him the I'm gonna die camera shot and he dies. <laughs> then Reagan and Irene escape in the truck. What happened in there? Are you okay? I'm okay. You were right. Bad things happen in that house. So I just finished watching the movie The Hatred, and I can say that this is probably the best horror movie I've seen in my entire life. Um, every scene had suspense that leads to the next scene. And those parts that I pretty much like handle watching. Never, I don't want to pretend to be something that I'm not. I just want to tell a story. I'm not perfect. So I'm sure people are going to find mistakes and things like that. I think it's just to entertain people. And an entertaining film you had. Mr. Kehoe. Please leave a like below if you fucks with the movie reviews. I fucking love making them and I hope you guys fucking love watching them. We want episode 20. Please subscribe because I have more content coming your way. And as always, I am Mr. Gigi and I am out. If you guys want to watch a quick behind the scenes video of how much trouble I had even getting this movie on my laptop, then go ahead and click this video right here. That video will be on my second channel. I hope you guys enjoy it as well. Thank you once again. I'm out.